Hi, I'm Philippe Omasi, postdoctoral researcher at Ecole Centrale de Nantes, and today I'm going to talk to you about our recent work on thermodynamic-based artificial neural networks and constitutive modeling. So let me start by saying thanks to the organizer that uh, assure and make possible this event despite the difficult situation with the pandemic. I will try my best in doing this exercise of talking in front of a screen, uh, but if you have questions, do not hesitate to contact me. So the main motivation of this work stems from the needs of describing structure that are made of materials with multiple characteristic length scale. A typical and classical example are earthquakes and pools. So in here you have a classical situation of an earthquake on the left where we have abrupt slips over a surface that we call fault that is of several kilometers. Now if we zoom over this region, we obtain another scale in which we record intense shear deformation that is of the order of some centimeter. Now at that point, if we zoom even more, we will observe another scale that is the scale of the grains of the uh, fault gauge, the poor networks, and where other thermohydromechanical couplings take place. Nevertheless, if we now zoom back to the fault slip, well, the average frictional behavior will depend on this microstructure. So this is to say that when we are describing structure made of material with multiple scale lengths, we need to rely on multiple multi-scale numerical simulation. So what we do in the literature is that, well, we use approaches like the finite element square methods to solve an auxiliary microscopic boundary value problem, BVP, but independently of the approach that we use, the idea is the following. Basically, we want to solve a microscopic boundary value problem that depends on the physics on the engineering problem at hand. And now imagine that we are relying on a displacement-based formulation so that we will pass incrementing strain to the micro scale where we will solve an even more, more complicated boundary value problem. And once this has been done, we will return to the macro scale, the incrementing stress. Now, as you can imagine, this resolution of the auxiliary BVP needs to be performed at each time step and at each point of our macroscopic structure. So, well, this is very time consuming and for real application becomes soon prohibitive. However, with the explosion of machine learning, we can think of having a machine learning network that will retrieve for us the constitutive link between strain and stresses and if this well, uh, succeeds, we will be able to replace the time-consuming resolution of the auxiliary boundary value problem by an artificial neural network, for example, that will be much, much faster. This is the main motivation of this work. Yet, there is a problem. And as we know, artificial neural networks offer high interpolation spaces, but nothing guarantees us that the prediction will satisfy basic laws of physics, like the laws of thermodynamics. So let's try to see how this can be performed. Let's start with the thermodynamic setting of the closest you have inequality, expressed here in a local form and in a finite strain formulation. So lowercase letter in here uh, identify volume density quantities. So we find D, the mechanical dissipation rate, S, the first piola kirchhoff stress, F, the deformation gradient, then C, the free energy, and eta, the entropy, while theta, the absolute temperature. Now let's imagine that we identified a unit cell, a representative volume element within our microstructure material, and let's assume that, well, the displacement fields are periodic along the boundary of this unit cell. Now we can compute the volume average of the closest Duhem inequality and we obtain what you can see here below. Just notice that uppercase letter in here denotes volume average of the uh, volume density quantities that we previously defined. And at this point, we need to make a choice. This choice concerns the material state space, that is the set of variables on which the constitutive behavior depends on. Here we rely on the theory of internal state variable. That is, the material state depends on a set of variables that are called observable, key, that are, for example, a strain measure and the absolute temperature, and depends also on an additional set of internal state variable, z. These internal state variables are introduced to compensate for the lack of information about the microscopic phenomena that manifest themselves 
as irreversibility at the micro scale. Now, the, these internal state variables are difficult to be identified for complex microstructure material, and for this reason, are, they are also called as hidden variables. Nevertheless, simplify this problem and just for the moment do not prescribe the physical nature of these variables. But continue by assuming material classes such that the following dependencies are valid. So we have the free energy, the stresses and the entropy that depends on both observable and internal variables, while the mechanical dissipation rate uh, well, depends additionally on the internal variable rates. At this point, we simply compute the time differentiation of phi, the free energy, and we substitute it into the uh, volume average closest to M inequality. This will bring us to identifying three equality identities that you can find in here. So you can see here we have the first one that is related to the stresses, the second to the mechanical dissipation rate, while the third one is referring to the entropy. Now, for simplifying this presentation, we will assume that we are dealing with isothermal processes. Nevertheless, the framework is general, and sometimes we may need of this third identity. And at this point, we would like to notice that the same framework that is based on a finite, on a finite strain formulation can be extended furthermore to generalized continuum theory. Let's now see how we can translate this principle into a thermodynamic aware neural network that we define in here as thermodynamic based artificial neural networks. And I will refer to it from now on as TAN. So, well, TAN relying on an incremental formulation of the material behavior. This is done by relying on two artificial neural networks. The first one that you can find in here takes as input the strain increment, the strain stresses and internal variable at time t, and predicts the evolution law of the internal state variable, that is the updated internal state variable at time t plus delta t. At that point, we take this prediction together with the strain at time t plus delta t, and we use a second neural network to predict the free energy. And then finally, relying on the automatic differentiation and the thermodynamic principle that we just derived, we are able to compute the increment in stress and the mechanical dissipation rate. So in a previous paper uh, that has been published in uh, JMPS, we uh, demonstrate the capability of TAN in uh, predicting with thermodynamic consistency uh, and high accuracy the behavior of homogeneous material. Yet, this formulation may, be, may have some drawbacks. This is the heuristic identification of the internal state variable. What are internal state variables? I agree with you. So, well, it depends on the application. Internal state variable may be irreversible deformation, porosity, granular temperature. It depends on the material that we are targeting. Nevertheless, we would like to ask ourselves if it is possible to identify these internal variables in an automatic manner. Well, this is possible by introducing another quantity that I define in here as internal coordinates. Internal coordinates are nothing else than microscopic quantities that identify the material state. That is, they are like internal state variable, but rather than lying at the macro scale level, they're lying at the micro scale level. So example of internal coordinates may be displacement, velocity field, momentum of our microstructure and any other microstructural rearrangement. As you can imagine though, these internal coordinates for a complex microstructure material will span high dimensional spaces. So we would like to be able to compress this information to be computationally efficient. This can be done by relying, for example, on autoencoders, that is dimensionality reduction technique, in which we basically take the internal coordinate C and we parameterize them into a low dimensional space to an encoder, and then we just reconstruct them with a decoder to their original um, shape. This is done by minimizing the so-called reconstruction error, that is the difference between C star and C. Nevertheless, as you can notice, well, by minimizing this reconstruction error, nothing will guarantee us that we are able to preserve the thermodynamic framework of this um, model. So, in that case, uh, it's very simple, I think. Our remedy is just to 
parameterize the internal coordinates within the town formalism. So we will come out with something like this, in which we have an encoder that takes the internal coordinates and give us a low dimensional representation that, as you will see, coincides with internal state variable that will be used to feed the upper part of the architecture that we already seen. At this point, we can eventually add a decoder that will de perform the inverse transformation, that is, will take the predicted internal state variable at time t plus delta t and will give us the uh, evolution of the microstructural field in terms of internal coordinates. So we will perform a first training by minimizing the error in energy, stresses, mechanical dissipation rate, as well as the reconstruction error of this autoencoder and some additional losses related to the derivative of the reconstructed output of the decoder with respect to the original input of the encoder. Once this training has been performed, we will come out with an unsupervised identification, thermodynamic consistent identification of the internal state variable. So we just generate them using the encoder, and at this point we just erase the encoder from the architecture. We will never use it anymore. At this point we freeze the trained decoder, and we just perform a fine-tuning of the upper part of the architecture, as before. But differently from before, we are able at any time in recall mode while making prediction, we are able to decode the internal state variable to obtain snapshots of the microstructure of complex material. So let's see how it behaves with some benchmark. Let's consider lattice structure within elastic microstructure. So we are dealing here with either regular lattice or non regular lattices. So as internal coordinates, we identify the uh, displacement of the nodes and the internal forces along each bar. Nevertheless, this choice is not mandatory, it's pretty free, and so it's just up to the, um, to the uh, problematic attempt. Then we generate random strain path uh, with a micromechanical model that, uh, whose code uh, we develop for this purpose. And once TAN has been trained on these data, we can see how they predict both the average behavior, for example, in terms of stresses, but also how they are able to reproduce the evolution of microstructural fields in terms of internal coordinates. Let's now pass to, well, the original uh, problem, that is the resolution of a large-scale boundary value problem of a structure characterized by a microstructure material. Now, what we do in here is, is we, are, we are relying on a non-linear uh, incremental asymptotic homogenization. Nevertheless, this approach is independent of the upscaling scheme. You could prefer using computational homogenization, for example. And at this point, what we do is that we identify a unit cell that you can see below, train the TAN on this cell, and at this point, the training network will replace classical constitutive model into a finite element method at each Gauss point. Of course, in this case, we will need the computation of the Jacobian that is performed relying on the automatic differentiation of the incrementing stress with respect to the incrementing strain. So at this point, differently from any other double-scale homogenization technique, we are able to solve the large-scale boundary value problem, but as well track through snapshots the evolution of the microstructural field. So let's see some example. The first one is involving monotonous strain path. So on the left, you see a uniform compression test, while on the right, a uniaxial compression test. So as you can see, as soon as the cell size epsilon tends towards zero, well, the double scale homogenized problem using TAN converge to the micromechanical real situation. This is with an accuracy that is extremely high. We are talking of accuracy that are approximately 99%. Then we can move towards more complex loading path, like here. We have a cyclic loading path in which we apply torsion at the upper bound of this structure. And after this um, uh, path, we just unload suddenly the structure. So on the right, you can see the evolution of one of the thermodynamically unsupervised internal state variable, while below, we uh, compare the computational cost ratio that is, you can see in here that the uh, double-scale homogenized model with TAN allow us to accelerate of several order of magnitudes the computational cost of the original micromechanical model. I would like at this point to arrive to the conclusion. So the uh, thermodynamic aware artificial neural network that we have seen, that we call TAN, 
They guarantee thermodynamic safe consistent prediction and for the time for the first time this applies also for complex material. Of course one of the main contribution of this work is the unsupervised identification of the necessary internal state variable and the state space of the material by relying on thermodynamic aware dimensionality reduction technique. Then Thanks to the general framework that we present, this method is able to be applied to any inelastic microstructure by relying on data that come from first principle simulation. And then finally, we notice the high acceleration of multi-scale simulation of several, sim uh, of, of several order of magnitudes. As far as concerned the perspective and ongoing work, we are currently applying TAN for modeling more complex material. We are actually targeting granular media and then in the future, the unsupervised uh, identification of the state space of complex material would allow us to grasp and understand a little bit more the physics of such kind of complex material. And finally, we foresee the development of digital twins based on time. Thank you.